Hello everybody. Uh, today we're gonna do a little work here at the Guru Brew. We're gonna do some, uh, who's that? <laughs> we're gonna do some soldering. Kicking the lights on. Gonna use the green screen again. Uh, long ago, when I was just a teenager, my dad taught me how to solder. And it's one of the better skills that I've learned. Uh, when you hook two pieces of conductive metal together, I'm not talking about the soldering for pipes, I'm talking about the electronic kind. It, uh, it's a useful skill that will last your whole life once you've learned how to solder correctly. And uh, being the geeky uh, guy that I am that likes to experiment, uh, you really need to know how to hook two pieces of metal, conductive metal together, if you want to, uh, you know, make things. So on this edition Guru Brew, we're going to get started. I'm going to teach you how to solder and the tools used to do so. Stay tuned. Uh, the first thing I want to discuss is the soldering tools themselves before we get into soldering. I have here three different kinds of soldering irons. There's other kinds as well, but this, these are the kinds that I have right now. Uh, this first one is a 25 watt pencil soldering iron. It uh, doesn't heat instantly. It takes a little bit of time to heat. You plug it in and it, it, they usually come with a little stand and you just keep it on there. I'd say within 10 minutes it's fully heated and ready to go. So this is good for fine delicate work. If you're working on little circuit boards or little chips, it, this is the way to go. If you're doing a little bit heavier stuff, uh, if you're trying to solder a, a switch to something or using you know heavier gauge wire I would recommend something like this and this is a hundred watt um, gun style it has a light that turns on and it's hot within uh, around 15 seconds and this uh, gets hot enough to the point where it would burn a circuit board so again go with this type kind of uh, pencil iron if you're going to be doing the small circuit stuff. Uh, as far as, oh here's one more kind, this is a, a, a torch style, it's, it's made more for uh, working out in the field if you don't have, if you're outside or something, you're trying to put up an antenna, you don't need electricity, it works on uh, butane that you um, put into the back of this here and then it produces a flame and uh, it burns internally and you can turn it up and down so you don't need electricity with this which is kind of nice but it is uh, it's not as uh, nice as, as these two here as far as uh, solder is concerned there's a couple different kinds of solder um, this solder I picked up at Radio Shack it's called rosin core solder and I got a big spool of it. I'm not real sure on the cost, maybe 10, 15 bucks for that whole thing. That's lasted me a really long time. There's other solders uh, that are used generally for uh, doing copper pipes in plumbing applications. And that's a no-no when it comes to um, using it for electronics. Stay away from that kind. This, this happens to be aluminum solder, but uh, they put way too much rosin in them. and, and it, makes it really a messy job so you want out the electronic solder which is like this also uh, both styles of these and even the pencil um, butane iron have replaceable tips so you can just buy replaceable tips this one fits this iron here again you have to heat this up for a certain amount of time what I like to do to make sure it's hot is I'll plug it in, wait about 10 minutes, and then I'll just touch my solder and make sure it's burning. Something that's useful to have around is a, a washcloth or a rag that's been damp and then wringing out. And the reason why I use that is to clean the tip. Um, I'll just go like this and make sure that the tip remains shiny. If the tip's not shiny, then it's not gonna solder well. So on this kind of iron here, what I'll do is I'll hold down the trigger and let it heat it up and then once it's heat, heated up I'll just go ahead and wipe the tip like this and if it still looks dull I'll go ahead and add a little bit of solder to the tip like this and then I'll just shake it off like this in the trash or something 
so the, the tip remains shiny. That's the key to soldering. If you have a dirty tip, it's not going to solder well. So that's a little bit about the soldering iron and you know, how to clean the tips off. Uh, this tool is a helping hand and this one was purchased but you can make your own if you have alligator clips. Um, it's useful to hold the wire while you're soldering and I like to use these especially if I'm putting two different wires together. Um, we're just going to experiment on some scrap wire that I have here. Also, um, some side cutters, such as these ones are nice, and they have a spring in the handle so that they spring back, so you don't have to use both hands to work them like this, it just has a spring. And uh, one other thing that is useful is um, the insulation strippers. And here's a fancy oops, brand of those. If you look, there's little holes, and you just find the hole that is your gauge of wire. You know, put it in here, and you pull the handle, and it strips the wire right off, just like that. So, when you get ready to solder, what I like to do is strip the end off. Put it in my clamp, just like that. We'll use a small one. Both of these would work great for this application. The first thing is you want to heat the wire up till it gets hot. If you put the solder down too soon and the wire is not yet hot, you're not going to get a good joint. So you want to make sure that you heat the wire up before that you even put the solder in. Once you, once you see that your wire looks hot, you can start to just add a little bit of solder in between the soldering iron and the wire itself until it just starts to melt in there. So you can see that uh, on this wire I have a pretty nice joint. Everything looks melted. I don't see any big uh, bulges of solder. It all looks melted and uniform. And that's the way you want it to look. Let's do one more here. We'll attach a couple wires together here just as a fun test here. Stripper. Oh, there's one more kind of stripper too. This this one was more expensive. This is a cheaper stripper. I don't always use it because I have my nicer one, but I think this was only a couple bucks. And the idea is you just put it in there and get a pull. And it does a nice job. So let me use this solder iron right now. I still let this heat up for about 15 seconds or so to make sure the tip is nice and hot. And I am heating the wire up before I add the solder. If you try to shove the solder in there before the wire is hot, you're not going to get a, a nice solder joint. So what I'm doing, is I'm just rubbing it on the wire itself and then I add the solder in between the wire and the tip. And then continue to rub until I see it uniform and then I'll pull the heat away just like that. And what I like to do after I'm, I'm done soldering is I'll shake it on something like that. You see that little piece flick off there? And then I'll take my rag and I'll clean up the tip and get ready for the next one. Look how that shined up. Okay, so I have these two wires with solder on, on them before I even stuck them together. And that's called tinning the wire. And it means that I just put uh, solder and prepped it on the, on the bare wire. And here's where this helping hand comes in. Real nice you can uh, use this arm to direct the wires in the spot that you want them so you can hook them together without burning yourself hopefully just like that okay same trick heat your soldering iron up get your solder in your hand apply heat to the joint but do not apply the solder yet since these wires are both tinned, we're going to see the solder start to melt. And as soon as we see that, we can go ahead and add a little bit more. Continue heating it. Slowly pull it away. 
and let that fully cool. Don't try to blow on it or anything like that. And there you go. That's a good solder joint. A couple more things if you want to take solder off. This is some good stuff. It's called desoldering braid. It is a, you know, actually this is empty right now, but it, it's a specially uh, formulated braid that's made out of copper that you can put on here and heat up and it will suck the solder away. Or you can use one of these, which is a solder ball. And you can, it's, uh, by squeezing it, it sucks in. If you heat the joint up, This is to remove the solder. And then you squeeze, you put it up there, and you suck it like that. It sucked the, the uh, solder right out of the joint. So that works great too. We're taking the solder out. Uh, a couple more things about, uh, you know, doing a good solder joint. Uh, the shrink uh, tubing is also available. It's great to have if you're if you're making a joint you don't want to leave the exposed wire ends so you can get a piece of this stuff and just cut the size that you need to fit over the top of the the joint say this stuff here you know slide it over your joint and then heat it up with a torch and that'll melt around the wire and that makes a really professional looking joint all right, so that's, uh, that's all there is about soldering today. Maybe uh, next time we'll get into it a little bit deeper, but uh, that's the basics of soldering. The main points are to heat your wire up well before you add your solder, and then use the right tool for the job. The pencil soldering iron is good for smaller detailed fine stuff, and then the bigger iron is good for bigger jobs, bigger wire, that sort of thing. So take care of yourself. Thanks for joining us on the Guru Brew. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.